Hey guys, it's Haley and welcome to another bookish video. Today I have a spooky season haul for you. I have about 30 books, so like one for each day of October. <laughs> if I'm being real, I'm not gonna read all these books in October, but I have a ton of books that have come into my life recently because a new indie bookstore opened down the street from me. I was sent some books, I bought a bunch of books to support the authors who supported me, and we're gonna get into all of it. A lot of them are Halloween, spooky season, fall vibes. So I'm excited to share them with you guys. Also, just like let the hat be, okay? I don't know how I feel about it either. <laughs> I never wear hats, but the leather bucket hat was just kind of calling to me. Um, it's like giving fall to my Lana merch. So just let it be. Let it be what it is. I don't want to see any bad comments about the hat. Just let me live. I'm very insecure about it. So before we get into the book haul, I have a, another type of haul to share with you. And that is a haul from the sponsor of today's video, which is Timu. Now I know a lot of you guys love shopping Timu. And ever since I discovered them, I have loved it too. But a couple of you guys did have concerns in my previous sponsorship with them. So of course I followed up with the brand and brought your concerns to them and they let me know about their third-party code of conduct so I'm gonna go ahead and link that down below basically Timu uses third-party merchants contractors suppliers etc and in order to offset a portion of their carbon emissions their third-party partners are prohibited from using certain materials in their products and having certain things go on at their manufacturing facilities basically from what I gathered from the code of conduct they also agree not to dump any hazardous chemicals in the air or in the waterways. So I hope if you had any concerns about Timu, that feels a little bit better. Also, it's very, very important to consider the other side of things like fast, easy, accessible shopping sources. Not everyone has the funds or the time to go through really expensive routes. So Timu is a great option just for accessibility's sake. I know it has been wonderful for people in my life. I've talked about it with some of y'all getting your Halloween decor from there. And of course I've used it on my own. So let me show you a little bit about navigating Timu's app. So this is the app in the app store for Apple. They also have it for Android, but I'm going to go ahead and get it and then click on my link that takes you right here to this wheel that you can spin and get all of these coupons. Oh my God, I got a hundred, no, $200 in coupons. Are you kidding me? So all of these will be saved to your account in the app. Now I'm going to go through and shop. They have all of my picks for the actual stuff that I got featured in the app. You can scroll through Get some stuff for yourself. Oh my god, these glasses in blue and pink. It's giving the bisexual fantasy. Also have blue and pink and white. Oh my god, trans flag. We love an ally. So I'm just going to add that to the cart. And before I go, look at the suggested stuff. Oh my god, could not believe. They had bum bum cream, these cutie little glasses, bike shorts. So I'm adding that to the cart. And then you'll see the coupon change. So it automatically applies the coupon that gives you the biggest discount. It's absolutely insane that you can get over $100 worth of stuff for 30 bucks. So it's super, super easy to shop. They have literally categories for everything under the sun. And here are a few of the things that I got from Timu recently. The first thing I'm so excited about is this monthly planner that magnets to my fridge. And it also came with a weekly one. Cameron is always wondering what's going on in my busy ass life. And now I can just direct him to the fridge calendar so he doesn't have to ask me dates multiple times. Girlies in relationships with men, I know you feel me on that. And it also came with all these cute little dry erase markers, which I'm definitely gonna color code everything. I also got these cushy and amazing slides, which I would show you on my feet, but I don't really wanna put my feet on the internet, but just trust, they're amazing. I also got a couple fall clothes items, so I will put in little inserts of me trying these on for you guys. I got an entire set of packing cubes. This is crazy, I was literally 
gonna order an $80 set of packing cubes on Amazon because I've been doing so much travel recently and obviously we're gonna be going to Bali next summer. If you haven't heard about that, look at the link down below travel with me next summer um but i have packing cubes for that now which is very exciting and similar to the packing cubes there's like drawer organization for like socks underwear things like that and to fill my little drawer organizer i got the most adorable set of socks like this is just giving me all the fall like neutral colors a little bit of like warm colors a green a brown like mm, yes these cutie little socks and then i got this massive thing of these hair ties and these are my go-to hair ties long hair girls they're the ones that look like this like they're almost like folded in on themselves so i got all kinds of neutral colors tons of them and i also got some really cute kitchen stuff First of all, their Halloween decor section is amazing, so you need to check that out. This is the little witch hand candle holder that I got, and I absolutely love it. And then also for things in the kitchen, because they literally have things in every category, it's crazy. I got this little herb grinder. I grow some mint and some basil, actually hanging in little planters in my library. And so I was like chopping it up, but I wasn't getting fine enough. And they had this little herb grinder on Timu. How convenient. I also got this set of just silicone like baking tools. It's blue, it matches my kitchen. Literally so cute and so nice. I love them. And I got this little strainer that goes on a pot. So you don't have to like hold the strainer and hold the pot. Listen, I'm a weak little noodle armed girl. <laughs> noodle straining noodles <laughs> so just snapping this on the pot and pouring it makes it so much easier i've actually already used this and i love it i mean that kind of just tells you that just runs the gamut and tells you how much you can find on timu i absolutely love it and if you want to shop on timu i will put my code down below for a hundred dollar coupon bundle if you use my referral code you can get all of these coupons for use beyond just one shopping trip which i think is so nice so y'all make sure to go ahead and check it out down below download the app use the coupon code and thank you so much again to timu for sponsoring this video now let's go ahead and get into the books so let's start out with the books from my indie bookstore because i'm very very excited about them uh if you're on my patreon you probably already saw a couple of these mini hauls so sorry for the repetitiveness but for everyone else you have never seen these before i have been discovering some great books at this new local indie bookstore i actually have like a subscription to their store so i get 25 percent off every single time i shop there I love it, but it's dangerous. <laughs> the first thing that I got from them is Dead 11 by Jimmy Giuliano. And I don't really know much about this at all, but when I read the synopsis, it really appealed to me. It is about this woman who's trying to figure out what happened to her son. He died in this traumatic way, but nobody knows how. So she's trying to put the pieces together and she finds articles or like clues in his room that he was researching this island and this island is really really creepy. So she thinks it might have something to do with her son's death. It says it's a creepy island where everyone has a strange obsession with the year 1994. Huh? So the 90s nostalgia is there but like it's giving weird. I don't know. It sounds like a good missing person thriller nostalgic horror twist, which y'all know I'm always down for. I'm excited. I also picked up Celeste Ng's new book, which is Our Missing Hearts. And this is like a family legacy story filled with themes of generational trauma and race and Y'all know I love a commentary heavy mystery. This kind of reminds me of The Truth About Melody Brown by Lisa Jewell, just based on the synopsis. I'm so excited to get to this as I always am with Celestine books. I also picked up Sex and Rage by Eve Babbitt. And this seems like kind of like a plotless book about women, which obviously sounds right up my alley it's about a dreamy young girl moving between la and new york city and it's sensuous it's dreamlike in its narrative it's spontaneously embracing fate and work and it further solidifies miss eve babbitt's place as a singularly important voice in la literature it's haunting alluring and alive 
Mm, yeah, that's all I need to know. I also picked up a memoir. That is Everything I Know About Love by Dolly Alderton. I had just been seeing this one all over my social media feeds, like TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Everybody's reading this book and freaking loving it. Out of my favorites of the year, I always have a memoir and I feel like I haven't read that like standout memoir yet. So maybe this will be the one. I also picked up Pond, which I have not heard anything about as well. It's by Claire Louise Bennett, but it sounds really good. It kind of sounds similar to Sex and Rage. Um, it's like a plotless book about a woman living her life. She is weary misanthropic and keenly observant and she chronicles her life on the outskirts of a small coastal village sidestepping the usual conventions of a narrative novel the woman ruminates on charms of bananas and oat cakes in the morning and spanish oranges after having sex and the small pleasures and anxieties of throwing a party she details exchanging salacious emails with a new lover and sitting in the bath as it storms outside it's a meditation on surviving as a woman that is haunting and playful mm. Yeah. And then the last one that I picked up from my local indie was Camp Damascus by Chuck Tingle. And this is another one that I was influenced to buy because of social media. It's a horror book and people are obsessed with this one, y'all. I'm definitely going to read this one during Haley Ween because the amount of things that I've heard about it, like y'all are going off. So I'm going to trust you. I don't really know much about it. It says nestled up high in the mountains is Camp Damascus, the self-proclaimed most effective gay conversion camp in the country. <gasps> okay, horror. Here, a life free from sin awaits, but the secret behind that success is anything but holy. Oh my God. Gay horror with probably themes of religious trauma and commentary. Yep, 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 yep. Y'all never steer me wrong. Next up, let's talk about the books that were sent to me or given to me. I got Deliver Me by L. Nash sent over by the publisher. Thank you guys so much for sending this over. When I read the little brief, I rarely accept ARCs because we all know how it goes sometimes as a reviewer. I don't think I need to remind you. Um, but I really only accept ARCs now that I genuinely really want to read and read them fast because they sound like something that I would love. Don't get me started on all the ARC requests I get for like fantasy books, YA books, things that I've literally openly said on my channel that I do not like, but Miss Elle Nash and her team were really listening <laughs> to my taste because this sounds right up my alley. It's about a woman who I believe works in like this creepy meat packing facility it's giving cows but definitely not as graphic she falls pregnant and she has a lot of pressures in her life to keep this baby i think there's a lot of commentary on being a woman and other people making decisions about your body for you which obviously is something that appeals to me i love reading that kind of feminist commentary but her mom and like the church and things like that are telling her like oh go be with the man who knocked you up but she has a crush on a woman <gasps> so we will see what happens to her next time i have a couple books that my mom gave me because she thought that i would like them and usually it's the other way around usually i'm giving books to my mom but she decided to flip the script and say um i have some recs for you miss girl so we will see <laughs> We might have to do a video judging my mom's recommendations. The first one she gave me is Please See Us by Caitlin Mullen. And this is a thriller about missing women. It says it's a suspenseful debut reminiscent of Laura Lippman and Chloe Benjamin. Two young women become unlikely friends during one fateful summer in Atlantic City as mysterious disappearances hit dangerously close to home. So these two girls from very different worlds basically become friends and connect in the midst of these disappearances in the coastal town. Can they break this ill-fated cycle or will they join the other victims? It explores the intersection of womanhood, power, and violence. And then she also gave me a James Patterson and she prefaced it. She was like, don't even say anything because she knew i would have something to say like i i'm not really james patterson's target audience and she was like listen i thought the same thing but i was desperate <laughs> and i read it 
and it was good. So I'm trusting her. This is the 14th deadly sin. It says on the front, to the women's murder club. No one is safe when everyone's a suspect. So women's murder club, I'm liking that. Not so much liking the back. What's going on, James? What's going on? I don't love that. So the women's murder club are basically solving murders that it seems like corrupt cops have committed. When every cop's a suspect, the women's murder club will risk their own life to save the city and each other. <gasps> okay, if I can get past all the like investigating stuff, I think I will like this. And then one of my patrons, dear, dear Dawn, who is basically my second mother at this point. <laughs> she reminds me a lot of my mom. These amazing relationships that we can build over the internet never cease to astound me, but Dawn, sent me three books when I was going through all of the shit that I went through recently because she's a sweetheart. Uh, so she sent me Cujo by Stephen King. Definitely, again, definitely gonna read this one during Halloween, during October. This is giving such like classic horror vibes. If you don't know the story of Cujo, uh, first of all, I love the movie, but it's about this killer dog, like this dog that goes crazy, which is so horrifying because animals really do have power. You know, like Boba could literally eat my face in the night and I would never know. So that is one of the most horrifying things, like man's best friend turning on you horrifying. She also sent over The Hike by Lucy Clark, who is the author of One of the Girls, which I gave five stars last year. So I'm hoping I like this one. It is a thriller. It's about Liz and her three best friends who have all just been having a rough time. So they take this nature retreat and it's just going to be like a weekend of hiking to get away and escape their lives. But as they escape civilization, they realize they're not the only ones and there might be someone stalking them and following along with them. Ooh, classic mystery thriller plot. I love it. And finally, she sent over The Block Party by Jamie Day, which I've heard a lot of good things about. This is a very suburban domestic thriller, kind of like breaking that perfect suburban veneer kind of vibes. And I love that. Y'all know I love that. It says the residents of exclusive cul-de-sac on Alton Road appear to be living idyllic lives, but underneath the surface, they're all entangled in webs of secrets and scandals. At the summer block party, there's only one thing more dangerous dangerous than the desserts, the neighbors. And this year, murder is on the menu. But who's the killer and why did they kill? The answer lies one year earlier when the rivalries and betrayals have first unfolded and the residents of Alton Road each discover that nothing and no one is ever as it seems. Ah, so juicy, so fun. Next, let me talk about my book of the month picks. So I got The Stranger Upstairs as my pick. This one is by Lisa M. Matlin, and I believe it's a mystery thriller. It's about this couple who buys an infamous murder house to renovate for fun, but it's quickly becoming a nightmare. With every passing moment, her life spirals further and further out of control, and with it, her sense of reality. As she peels back the curl wallpaper and discovers the house's secrets, she realizes the deadly legacy of Black Woodhouse has only just begun. Ooh, this sounds very October, very creepy. And I got Gone Tonight as an add-on. This one is by Sarah Pecknan. Don't know what happened to Greer Hendrix. She left her in the dust, I guess. And this is about the harrowing secrets that lie between a mother and a daughter as the mother tries to desperately protect her daughter through her unplanned pregnancy. There's secrets, there's lies, there's drama. It's a thriller. And the other add-on that I got really does not fit the theme, like actually at all. <laughs> I will probably say this one for February, next February. And that is Romantic Comedy by Curtis Sittenfeld. I believe this is the author of Prep, which I've been interested in reading. So I wanted to pick up this one. It's about a romance between two writers who are writing sketches. It's giving like SNL vibes. And it just seems really light, really fun. I've heard good things about it. So I guess we will see next year when I'm back in a romance mood. Next up, we're gonna get into all the books that I ordered because of the phenomenal authors who have come out to support me and women in the horror community recently. Thank you so much 
to all of these authors again I, I thank them profusely already I know but I'm just very very appreciative of their support because there were a lot of silent or um, hateful voices and as a reviewer you know obviously I'm not thinking about an author when I'm reading the book it's really just about the book but to know that the person who wrote the words is someone who I would want to support that's important to me as well. I have a very difficult time separating the art from the artist because I think you can hear the artist um, in the subtext a lot of the time. So I think that says a lot. First up, we have Small Town Monsters by Diana Rodriguez Wallach. And this is one that I'm definitely reading during Halloween, during October. It's about two people who return to the suburb where they grew up and they are both realizing that something is not as it seems in the neighborhood and they team up to figure out what the hell is going on. I also have hashtag thigh gap by Chandler Morrison. This is like commentary on EDs, uh, women's beauty standards, etc. When a model gets dethroned and starts to question all of her self-worth. I have The Devil Takes You Home by Gabino Iglesias. And this... I have really high hopes for because it's giving Blacktop Wasteland, which y'all know is my favorite book that I've read this year so far. Uh, it's about this guy who had like formerly a life of crime, but he has left the crime industry. <laughs> He's like, no, I'm not gonna do it. I'm gonna focus on my family, but he gets an opportunity for one last big thing. So he decides to do it and they could have disastrous consequences. I also have two books by Annie England Noblin because I just could not decide between them. They both sounded so good. The first one is Maps for the Getaway and this is like a girly pop contemporary story about best friends going on a road trip. So atmospheric, so cute. If I ever go on a road trip, I'm gonna read that one. And then I also got a Christmas little cozy book because I could not resist. Christmas in Blue Dog Valley. Are you kidding? This is like giving Hallmark cutesy dog romance at Christmas. Yeah, 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 yeah. After all the horror that I'm gonna partake in in the next couple months, I think I'm gonna need this for the holiday time. It's about a vet but not just any vet. She's the vet to the Hollywood pet stars. She leaves LA and arrives in Blue Dog Valley and realizes three things. Never agree to upend your life when you're hungover. Potbelly pigs are not true farm animals and she's gonna need a warmer coat. Like, does this not just already sound like girl from the big city goes to the small town and she's a vet? Are you kidding me? So she comes up with an idea to reinvigorate the once flourishing Blue Dog Valley, a Christmas carnival. Will it be enough to salvage the dying town? And could it bring Goldie closer to a certain grumpy man? Oh my God, a grumpy sunshine romance, reviving a town with a Christmas carnival. Stop, stop, I need it. I also have a couple books by Brianna Morgan. The first one we have is Unboxed, which I've actually had on my TBR for a while. It's about a paranormal vlogger who goes viral online for getting into a fight with his girlfriend that was like on camera. And he starts losing a bunch of subscribers. So in order to get them back, he wants to do one of those like mystery box unboxings and he orders a mystery box from the dark web. And this is about what's inside of it. And then I also got this short story collection, The Trick or Treater and Other Stories. And obviously I got it because Trick or Treater, I want something that takes place on Halloween night to read during Halloween. If you're probably hearing me reference this thing called Halloween and not knowing what the hell I'm talking about, it's my October readathon. It will be announced soon. So just, just keep that in the back of your little noggin that that's gonna be coming. Um, but don't worry about it. The, the announcement video is coming soon. And I also have a ton, ton, ton more books that I got from amazing authors who are supporting me on my Kindle. So I'm not gonna go through synopses and all of that of these. I'm just going to quickly read them out for you in case you're interested. All right, we have The Bell Chime by Mona Kabani, American Darkness by Garrison 
Kelly. Black Widow by Nikki Shearsby. Killing My Flesh Without You by Ryan Thomas Levy. Disseverment by ZC Kroll. And I also have every single one of Caitlin Marceau's books. <laughs> I have some physical copies uh, and some on my Kindle. I just absolutely love her writing. I'm so happy that I got the push to start reading her from this whole toxic situation. If anything good came of it, it's that. So yeah, thank you again to all of those amazing authors and I hope you guys would go support them as well. The last few books, I just got at random little places because I wanted them. No other excuse. <laughs> first up we have Autumn Crow High and this is the first book in the Autumn Crow High series. It's called Fresh Hell. This is the like nostalgic 90s inspired series by Cameron Chaney who is a fellow booktuber. I will link him down below. Love his channel. And I really loved his short story collection Autumn Crow. I gave it five stars. Literally loved every single story in there. And this little series is going to take place in the town of Autumn Crow where it's Halloween every single day. Y'all know I love Fear Street. I love Goosebumps and this is going to give some vibes so another perfect October read. I also have the Saturday Night Ghost Club by Craig Davidson which is giving like Stranger Things, Secret Society, Club, After School and we're riding our bikes to go investigate mysteries. I'm reading it this month and I can't wait to tell you guys all about it. I have A Certain Hunger by Chelsea G. Summers and this is about a woman who is a chef and also a cannibal and she allegedly hates and kills men so you know I'm on board with that. I have Slaughterhouse Five by Kurt Vonnegut which is obviously a classic but it's one that I have not read and it's one of my friend from booktube Aspen's favorite books of all time so I'm also gonna give this one a try this month and very similarly y'all probably saw me feature this one on my TBR for this month as well. Slewfoot by Braun which is one of my friend Deja's favorites so I'm gonna be trying out a bunch of friends faves this month and I'm so excited for it. Slewfoot is excuse Boba's barking. Slewfoot is really really out of my comfort zone because it's more fantasy, slower, more historical but I guess we will see how I like it at the end of the month. So that is gonna be it for today's book haul. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and don't forget to go down below and check out Timu if you wanna get that $100 coupon bundle. And thank you so much to Timu again for sponsoring this video. If you like this video, go ahead and give it a like and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. And don't forget to go to therapy and read a book this week. I will see you guys in my next one. Bye!